Hey, what's going on, guys? What's up, Dago? Can you hear me okay? I'm using a different camera, which I think I'm using the audio device from it, but I'm not 100%. <laughs> if you can't hear me, let me know. This entire thing will be a bust. I got to restart. <laughs> good sound, good sound. Okay, that, that makes me feel better. That makes me feel better. What's up, Space Marine? What's up, Trinity? How's it going, guys? Oh. Kind of wanted to wait for a few other people before we get started. There's a couple of usuals that like making their stop. Sorry, my cat keeps. I don't know if you heard that. If it picked it up, I sneeze. Hey, no sneezing. Live streaming, no sneezing. How are my acros doing? My acros are doing great, actually. Oh, Zumi. Yeah, hey, what's up, man? Um, acros are doing great. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Right there is my uh, little uh, frag rack. And so I, I like to like lift them up a little bit over time. They do good, they're doing good, I'm happy. Uh, yeah, the black bar. I've got a couple of pictures that I posted in Discord and I can, I mean, I can try to get some in here maybe the next video or two. Uh, and they look great, man, they look awesome. Super excited. But, uh, So, which uh, which ones are you planning on getting? Do you have a plan? How's the new freshwater tank doing? The freshwater tank is doing great. Um, so I haven't really talked about it yet because, hey, TMG. <clears throat> what I'm planning on doing is uh, finishing up all the plants first and then actually doing the video. I've recorded like 90% of it, but unfortunately almost half or more of my plants arrived dead because the uh, distributor did not include an ice pack and I live in goddamn Houston. Are you kidding? It's been like 100 degrees for like the last two weeks, like 104, um, and you don't include an ice pack and you send a delivery. It's ridiculous, man. They were melted, it was a giant mess. So once that comes in, I've got another order, I got a refund, so it's fine. But once that's in, you know, I should be all right. Green, blue, yellow theme. That could be pretty good. Yellows can be actually kind of difficult from what I've found. Uh, <clears throat> uh, check out, uh, actually, one of the ones that I got, uh, TCK Pikachu. You can check that out. It's actually a really nice yellow Acropora. Aquatics. how do you put it? K Aquatics? That probably makes a little bit more sense. Yeah, no problem, man. Actually, I, I just got back. Yeah, TCK Pikachu, man. Awesome. I just got back from a uh, company happy hour, so I'm a little bit blazed right now. <laughs> Sorry. I felt like it was a good time to do a live stream and work on my aquascaping. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, um, but I've chosen not to drink anymore tonight, so we should be okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, I might wait like maybe two more minutes and then we can go get started. Yeah, man. There's The thing about yellow Acropora is a lot of times they don't hold their color. There's only a couple that I've seen that actually do a good job at that. Um, as for green, there's plenty. I mean, I've got a, uh, a highlighter. Check out a highlighter Acropora. There's a bunch of neon green Acroporas that look amazing. Um, for blue, there's a ton of options. You can check out... Uh, um, an organ blue tort. Okay, check out an organ blue tort, or you can also check out um, so the last batch of acros that I got from a guy on Reef to Reef um, was uh, I got a freebie, and it's called a Miyagi tort. And actually, I didn't even know about it, but it's like bluish purple, so it looked great. Check that out too. Adam Bolin, Sweden says hi. Well, Texas says hi back. SC Reefer, what's going on, man? How much did I pay for the 250? 
Oh my. Um, well, I paid a lot. <laughs> I paid a lot of money. Um, it did help that one, I got a good deal on the tank because I bought it during um, was it a, a Black Friday. So I bought everything during Black Friday. And for those of you in Sweden, um, do not know the majesty of Black Friday. Say, oh God, it's terrible. It's just a giant marketing scheme, but it doesn't matter. You still get some deals that are okay. Um, I got a decent price on this. The SCA tank itself, plus the stand, was uh, like, I don't know, 3,500 or something like that. It's Starfire glass. The thing's amazing. I mean, I, there, so there, there, there's a thing when you uh, uh, get to a certain point in tanks where the price doesn't go, um, but everything else, super expensive. The lights were probably the most expensive um, of the lot of validity, all that kind of crap. So yeah, about 10 grand on this tank here. Um, don't tell my girlfriend. Um, she's a consultant, so she's not here Monday through Thursday evening. So luckily I don't have to, I can be, I'm fine. Hey, will you get another angel? I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about the Coral Beauty. Um, I'm kind of split on that right now, maybe. The nice part about doing what I did initially with the Flame Angel and the Coral Beauty is I introduced them at the same time. Um, and that helped with aggression. And I think there would have never been a problem if they were able to stay in the 250. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, you gotta put all these fish into like a 30 gallon tank. It's, it's difficult, right? Um, I do actually, I have two angels in my second quarantine tank. They are uh, swallowtail angelfish. They're Ginocanthus. They're part of the same group that basically is reef safe. The most reef safe angels that you can get. Um, that includes, so, so you got Japanese swallowtails, you got mass swallowtails, zebra swallowtails. Um, you have Watanabe angels. You've got uh, Lamarck angelfish. These are all part of the uh, Ginocanthus um, species or genius or family science science name. Um, that's what they're a part of, and those are ones that have a much less chance of eating or nipping coral, which is pretty awesome. Um, but I've got two of them, uh, a male and a female. The male, excuse me, I've got two of them. They're both female. One of them will eventually turn male. They're the weird sex angelfish. Mr. Mike Heya Brotato, hello. Carlos Gomez, do you frag your coral? If you do, do you trade, sell them? Um, my plan is to eventually do just that, but at this point, I don't think they're in a fraggable state. Um, I think one of my deep water acros uh, is probably at that point. Um, I have a couple higher end zoas, which I do plan on fragging, um, but again, I like to grow them out. Uh, the Acropora bit is still a little bit new. The tank is pretty much going in the direction of being an acro dominant tank. So uh, definitely eventually, eventually. And uh, especially with the uh, um, 90 gallon, which is gonna be a anemone tank, I'll definitely be uh, cutting as well as waiting for a natural split. So yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll be selling those probably as well. I don't know if I'll do it locally shipping. I mean, I've shipped live stuff before. Um, I've sell, I've sold uh, a Taiwan bee shrimp, crystal reds, higher grade, like Masara grade shrimp. Um, I've sold cherry red shrimps and I've shipped them online and I've had great success doing it. So yeah, eventually, eventually sometime. Um, Tank looks awesome. I just switched from the black box to T5 and AI prime combo. SC Reefer, were you, are you using a, uh, a like a, a hybrid kit? Like um, the aquatic life? Because those things are pretty sweet. Prolific. What's up, man? How's it going? You're always here. You're always on YouTube. Do you have a job? Do you have anything? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm waiting for it. It'll be awesome. And then tank. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about it. Actually, I talked about <laughs> um, a 61-inch aquatic life. Yeah, that's pretty sweet, man. Um, I've got right over there a uh, – it's sitting on my couch. You can kind of see it. Uh, that is the 36-inch aquatic life. Um, I haven't done anything with it yet, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Vic. Oh, I just responded to a couple of your comments, I think, didn't I? Here's some truths. Here's some truths. I am currently sitting on the floor after going to a company happy hour, drinking way too much, and I probably shouldn't be live streaming or aquascaping right now. That is a truth that I can give you right now. That's the best I can do. 
<laughs> I'm too honest sometimes. What made you so handsome, mom or my dad? Uh, I refuse to answer that question. <laughs> Let's hear some Darius. Darius? Oh my God, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Crazy. Crazy. I got my liquor cabinet right here, so I can continue to partake, but I refuse because I still want to do some stuff today. I want to be I want to be awake and stuff. Would you consider setting up a Pico and making it a series? Carlos, yes. Actually, actually so I'll be honest, the 20-gallon Iwagumi tank, the freshwater tank, was initially going to be a Pico or like a super nano tank uh, that was going to sit on my desktop. Um, but I decided, I was like, you know what? I really miss the freshwater side, so I kind of wanted to get back into that a little bit. So I just picked up a 20-gallon again. Um, eventually, yes. Right now, no, because I'm, I'm trying to set up a 90-gallon tank and... Timing wise, it's going to take a while. Uh, September, I'm going to be going to Seattle for my sister's wedding. Um, in October, November, I'm going to be going to Hong Kong. Um, so kind of timing wise, setting up another tank might be a little bit difficult. So, you know, you know how things go sometimes. Uh, but definitely, yeah. I mean, if I was doing this back when uh, I think Rico, Rico's Reef Tanks was doing his Rico, the, the, the Nano Reef Challenge, I probably would have participated. Um, but I really didn't start saltwater until somewhat later, and I was working on the 250. So, you know, that's kind of how it goes. Am I using Aquatic Life LEDs? Uh, no. So for the Aquatic Life build that's going to go over the, uh, uh, the 90-gallon Clown Heron, it's going to be uh, four T5 bulbs. Uh, right now, I don't know what combination. I've got a bunch of different, probably maybe two blues, two uh, Coral Lifes. Uh, the LEDs for it are putting a lot of light Oh, Bob's going off. Ignore. Aaron, got to go. Love the channel. Stop on my channel sometimes. SC Reefer definitely will. Guys, go check out his channel. Um, I've been over there, by the way. It's great. You do a good job. So check out his channel. Drinking and reefing do go very well together. Man, hold on a second. I should be honest with myself, I guess. Do you get an ice cube? All right. Aquascaping and drinking. It is. Ooh. Okay. So, you got to my girlfriend, so, okay, check this out. Girlfriend bought me a set of uh, uh, whiskey glasses during Amazon Prime Day, okay? And she also brought me a decanter. Now, for those of you that are chronic alcoholics, let me explain something. There is zero reason, <laughs> zero reason to have a whiskey decanter, okay? Decanter adds nothing to hard liquor like whiskey, bourbon, whatever. The only reason to have one is to seem important or above your station while you pour, potentially. You can offer your friend a glass, but there's literally no reason to have one. For wine, There's it's important because you add air to it and wine snobs, whatever. But I don't drink wine, so I don't really care. So I told her, I don't know, we're supposed to be aquascaping, but I'm talking about alcohol. So I told her about this. I was like, you know, uh, you bought me this decanter and these fancy whiskey glasses, but I don't have the really cool. Um, and so I told, and, and she was like, okay, fine. Um, and so she bought me this like 10, I feel bad about this. And look, I say this out loud and I really sound like a bastard. Um, so she bought me a silicone mold. It was like 10 bucks and it creates these perfect cube ice cube things as well as uh, spheres. So I'm gonna go full bougie on you guys. And I've got my uh, ice cube, my cube ice cube. Actually, you know what, this is goddamn perfect. I've got my cube ice cube for a cube harem tank and we can all drink together. So guys, if you're not, if you're at home right now and you have some alcohol, please enjoy because I'm, that's what I'm going to be doing probably for the rest of the tonight, and it's your fault. Cheers. Mm. Okay. That's nice. 
Also, fun <laughs> fun fact. Um, this is complete shit whiskey. I believe it is Maker's Mark. And I put it in here because it looks really fancy. So when people come by, I'm like, oh, look at this decanter, but it's just shit. I'm like, I'm keep my good stuff up in there, like my single malt scotch and stuff like that. A drop of whiskey won't harm your tank as well. I've seen bacterial reactors running on alcohol. Oh, you're talking about uh, vodka dosing. Yeah, that's true. Uh, what type of clowns are you putting in there and how many? Um, that's something I'm kind of torn about. I'm thinking on the numbers between 20 and 30, somewhere in there. Uh, as for the specific type of clown, I don't actually know. I've spoken to a, a local fish store of mine and I, uh, I was like, hey, what do you guys think about bulk sell me like maybe black storm clownfish or maybe the mocha storm clownfish? It was more, it started off as a joke and, and really it should stay a joke, but maybe he was a little bit serious. So I'm not entirely sure yet. <laughs> well, we could do vodka dosing, both drink and aquaculture. That's very true. Get something rare for clowns. Well, I mean, Mocha Storm and Black Storm are technically rare, but that'd be really expensive. Okay, come on. Let's do the math here, people. I'm pulling up my calculator. Those things retail, the, the better prices. Now, I don't, they, they're constantly dropping in price. They're just like Lightning Maroon Clownfish when those things dropped in price. Um, they're probably about 250 or so each. Um, so say I get 20 of those, that's like 5,000. I obviously I try to get a deal, but that's a lot of money, man. Oh, I mean, in case of anemones, like, uh, heard I. oh, in case I get like a Magnifica. I mean, two fifty for fish you can't eat. Uh, no, I'd be fine. I mean, we're, if we're if we're continuing, <laughs> can you eat clown? Uh, you could definitely eat clowns. There won't be a lot of meat. Okay, so yes, rare anemones. I wouldn't call a Magnifica necessarily rare. What I would qualify as rare would be coloration. Um, go, like, look at the uh, uh, Giganti. I don't know what the name of it, but the carpet anemones. Um, generic green, uh, generic blue, those exist. But you can go look up rainbow carpet anemones. Those things are crazy, but they cost like $2,500, okay? Carpet and like hot pink, if you get the hot pink kind, um, as well as the rainbow anemones, uh, the rainbow carpet anemones, those things are ridiculous. But um, as for rare anemones, I do plan on getting some. Actually, I was talking with a guy who, so I live in Houston, right? This guy, Austin, and he sells uh, 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 Colorado sunburst anemones, which are very rare, very, very rare. Um, and of course, um, these are rose bubble tips. So you get those. Um, he also has the lemon drop. If you're familiar with the lemon drop, uh, rose bubble tips, those things are amazing. He's got sunrise, Arizona, is it Arizona sunrise, yeah, Arizona sunrise, as well as uh, Mark's uh, from Coral Collections, uh, Inferno uh, rose bubble tips. So I'm, I'm predominantly gonna do rose bubble tips, but yeah, those are high quality anemones. Those are what I would qualify as rare. And they're also very expensive. Like I think the, um, the uh, Colorado Sunbursts are about twelve to fifteen hundred each. Uh, the Infernos are like four hundred, four hundred to five hundred. Uh, the Arizona Sunsets are about the same. Lemon Drops, he didn't even price. Those are those are probably going to be up there with Colorado Sunbursts, my guess. You're pretty lively for someone who just came back from duty. I got off work. Okay, let me put it this way: I work at a uh, a commodities trading company. Okay. IT. I deal with people's problems all day. When I get home, I actually get to somewhat be myself. I don't have to deal with that political bullshit. So yeah, I'm a little bit, <laughs> a little bit animated right now. I also drank a lot. So, hmm. anyways, we should probably get started. I've been delaying long enough. So, turn my phone on mute. Let me, uh, let me see how I'm gonna set this up. You guys can kind of tell me what you think. So most expensive coral I have bought. That's a good question. I don't know. Uh, most, exp I'm going to, I'm doing my Slavic squat right now. Uh, 
The bounce mushrooms are individually expensive. They, uh, but I got them as a pack as a really good deal off some guy at Reef to Reef. Um, man, I would have assumed it would be an Acropora, but I also got them as a batch. Yeah, actually, probably the bounce mushrooms. That's, that's my guess. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm full Gopnik. Hello, my friends. My name is Aaron. This is Aaron the Quadics. Yeah, that's true. My, if your heels are off the ground, you're a capitalist spy. So see, there we go. Full heels, full heels. Yeah, Western spy. Heels are off the ground. There we go. Just to make sure we're all on the same page. <laughs> you guys are ridiculous. Boris, by the way, is an amazing YouTuber. You should definitely watch him. <laughs> okay, my laptop is running low on battery. So let me plug this in so that you guys can continue to watch or something like that. Uh, you know, I didn't really think this one through because I don't know where a plug is. <laughs> Hold on. I think I got one over here. Here we go. Okay. We all good? We good. Okay. I can start aquascaping. Um, so what I've got here is this entire tub right here has all of the pieces. Um, I've got the big pieces, which I'm probably going to pull out first. I've got medium sized pieces and I've got a uh, little like plating sides. Let me kind of pull some of these out so we can look at them. So I've already washed these down. Um, outside before we started. So, yeah. Yeah, these are a BRS Reef Saver. Uh, I didn't want to go with something that was, uh, uh, that I needed to cure for three months, like the Kai and the 250. So I decided to go with this instead. So let me tell you my general idea. Like basically the only thing I've got going, all right, it's really hard for you to see probably with the camera but there's a black outline throughout this entire piece of cardboard. That is the exact dimensions of my tank. The, uh, it's 32 by 24 by 24. So that's the dimensions I've got to work with. Um, my current idea, and you guys can give suggestions if you like, is to create, so assuming that this is the back of the tank, this is the front of the tank, that I wanted to, let me move this out of the way. I wanted to create a, kind of like a mountain scape right here in the back corner. And then maybe right here, create a tower. So you'll have all this open space in the front because I like that kind of minimalistic aesthetics. But uh, you know, you've got a bunch of room for bubble tips and other anemones to grow and then a large tower. And I'm thinking for the tower, you know, you can put maybe uh, some rock flower anemones on it because they prefer the shade and they just kind of like sit there and they do nothing. So that's, that's my kind of general idea. So I'm going to kind of like play with the pieces and see what it looks like. Hmm. Oh, you guys got me drinking. It's your fault. Okay. So let's kind of let's see what kind of pieces I actually have to work with here. Let me, I'm going to start with this side. What I really want to do is start small. Small here, meet up in the middle, and have a big piece. Uh, maybe have something like, kind of like this. It's facing down. It's like this triangular piece. So it kind of goes into the sand. I think that, that would kind of work. Uh, let's see. Got a bunch of other pieces in here too. Oh. Maybe I should start smaller. Not go quite as big as that. Maybe start like this instead. What is the tower? What if the tower cascades down a little bit, like a nice curve, so it could house more NEMS? Don't exactly know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm having a hard time visualizing that, uh, but uh, yeah, we'll figure this out. <laughs> this is a pretty nice piece, but I don't know if I want to use. It. I always buy more rock than I need, just to. Uh, 
just to make sure that I have uh, good PCs. That's kind of what I hope for anyways. Uh, maybe this is a continuation. We have this kind of like curve in a little bit. And maybe take this piece and see, see, see kind of what this is doing? This is kind of wrapping around. Try to make these intersections look as natural as possible. Um, let me see. So it depends. See, I don't know how high I want to go with this, this section anyways. Um, let me see. Got this piece. Got to figure out what makes sense back here. I kind of want to use up as much space as possible. Well, you have a centerpiece. Um, you're talking about like a central focus or something? If so, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily know. It's possible I can create like a small island. That's an idea, an idea worth talking about. Some more pieces here. Getting this part is a little bit difficult. I want something that naturally flows, oops, something that naturally flows from this and back. But see, this looks, that does not look good. You get this kind of clear separation. No, I don't like that. Ooh, what about this? Have it, it kind of juts in a little, ooh, I like this. I like that. But I need to create something maybe tall in the back to create a more seamless, you, you kind of see all this coming together. This is only a rough draft, guys. Um, maybe the angle, maybe I need to show you guys a different perspective, but I don't want to like stand in front of you the entire time. Um, I'll tell you like that for now. Okay, so got that. I kind of want to curve this back and then terminate it at some point. Um, let me see. No, I don't like this. Ooh, maybe this, hmm. Need smaller pieces for the rest of that. Okay, so let me give you an idea of what I'm looking at right now so you can kind of see it. So basically, here's the front of the tank, right? And then there's the back of the tank. So the way that you should see it is that you get this curve, which gives you a lot of space for anemones. It kind of, the height climaxes right there in the center. And then you got this open space. So with this open space, I was thinking about maybe creating a tower like right here or something again left side. So you still get a lot of open swimming space. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Just kind of like a first attempt, first, first draft a little bit. Click, clack, grief. What's going on, man? Mochi. I never come to this. My old cat's always, okay, wait. Mochi. You want to check this out? What's going on? Buddy, buddy. Come on, come on. There, smell everything. Get your hair everywhere. <laughs> Similar to Escape, Mr. Mike. Body. See, his tail's up, so he's happy. That's, that's how you know. It's okay. Dude, there is so much hair inside my 90-gallon sump, it's unbelievable. Like, for a day or two, I just kind of, like, left it, like, left my doors open to the sump cabinet. And so <laughs> my cat just decided, look, it just jumped in the box. The way it jumped into that box is the same way that it jumped into my sump. So never again, never again, guys. The only thing I could think of as a benefit is that 
it's actively giving nutrients, bear with me, nutrients to the tank at the very beginning. <laughs> Your skimmer skims out cat hair? Yeah, I, I can believe that. Okay, so here's the hard part. This part looks good. I like this, but it's the tower that's going to be difficult. So what I'll do is take my remaining large pieces and kind of work on a structure. And, and keep in mind, I'm really only messing around with certain stuff. Oh, I like that. Hold on. Let me um, let me move you guys so you can kind of see more of what this looks like. So down here. Um, but again, the amount of space that I have available is like here to back there. So there is some space back here, which I could still kind of play with. But there's like this automatically there's an overhang right here, which I kind of like for this tower. Um, I don't know how high I want this to be. I do want it to be kind of high, but what I wanted to do is to create some uh, branches. That's why I've got some of these pieces. You can get them at Bulk Reef Supply. Uh, I think they call them Bulk Reef Saber uh, Plateau. Um, I don't remember. Do you guys remember what these are called? I mean, obviously, I would kind of glue these in, but you know, it, see something, something kind of like that. That would look kind of cool. I, I have this. Uh, this is the uh, Nios Reef Cement. So I definitely plan on making that a hell of a lot more stable. Um, yeah, I would like. <laughs> so any of these kind of things, I'll have to add later. Because right now, just kind of aquascaping, it's too difficult without cementing them into place. So I'll, I'll play with these probably later. But just in terms of an actual structure, this is what I'm kind of thinking of. Um, but the question is, how high can I make this and still feel comfortable? <laughs> how high can we go? We're playing Jenga. Oh, Jesus. This is not. OK, there we go. That's a lot more stable. Uh, I mean, that's not terrible. OK, there we go. That's more, See, look, you hit it, not a whole lot of movement. That's pretty good. Sorry, but I hate cats. One jumped on my table when I was younger and ate my food. You know, man, sometimes people have PTSD. Sometimes they go to Iraq, Afghanistan, and they see their buddies get shot. It's pretty bad. Seriously, go, go support your, uh, your veterans. And then some people, they have their cat jump on their table and eat their food. You know, pour some out for those people. Mm. I hope you recover. From your incident um so let me know if you need some support i'm always here i support you I support you <laughs> sorry <laughs> i legitimately support our veterans but that's the most ridiculous thing i've heard all night okay so this is supposed to be so the tank height the tank height is 24 inches okay uh which means that um let me see here. About this. Yeah, uh, kind of back this up a little bit. So this is about the height of the tank. And honestly, I was kind of hoping that we could get this height of the tower too close to the surface, as close to the surface as we possibly can. So maybe one additional rock, and we can get there. Um, maybe a combination of rocks, actually. We need, we need to give this piece of rock some character. Um, so by itself, once this gets glued in, I think this is going to be great. Um, right now, obviously, it's a little bit unstable. Um, I want a cap, like a cap to this. That would be pretty cool. Super glue works wonders. I'm using Nios Reef Cement, a little black bottle or container right there. Um, so I'm going for a little bit more than just super glue. The super glue does work pretty well. Um, now maybe, maybe I can create like a combination piece, like take these two pieces, cement them together, right? You get, you get, you sticking with me people? And then take that and then put this on top, maybe. I don't know. I don't know, actually. I like this though, I like this so far. This is pretty good. Because you've got this really nice sloping curve around the back, 
but you've got a lot of open space. And if you wanted to, um, you could take this, like, or a piece like this, put it in the center, bury it, because you gotta keep in mind, it's gonna be buried in the sand, right? And you can create an island, and you can put uh, maybe something nice on this, like maybe some euphilia, torch corals, uh, something. I don't know what, but you can definitely put something there. This tower, though, I gotta figure out. Um, let me see. Huh. That's pretty cool. It is kind of a cap, right? It kind of like points up to the top. It's pretty stable. I mean, honestly, if a clownfish can move this, I think it deserves to move this. <laughs> On top of that, this is gonna be all glued together. I'm not really concerned. And like as a unit, I can lift this out of the water if I really need to, see? So this is probably like maybe 20 pounds, uh, 30 pounds of weight. So that's not too bad. My question, so, okay, here's the thing. Say I go with this design. Say I, say I go with this tower. You can't just have the tower because in, in my opinion, it looks unnatural. What you got to do is you got to create a base, like a foundation, so that it looks like it's coming up from the ground. Do you guys kind of follow? So, like, say I take this piece, right, and I kind of, like, maybe attach it here, um, take another piece, attach it there. Well, okay, I'm, I'm kind of running on to this, this, this line, but like that, you see, and then come around this side and add an additional, maybe not that piece, uh, and an additional piece, and you've got this. I like this, man. This is this is pretty sweet. Um, and again, I have my, uh, you can't really see it right now, but uh, all of those slate looking pieces, those are all flat. So I can use those to create uh, kind of these little platforms, which can actually end up being pretty cool. You could always take a hammer to make some rubble type pieces. Yes, that is correct. Any leftover pieces, like, this, like this, look at this. You got this big old piece. Got nothing with this yet. Um, and to make things look as natural as possible, I got a chisel and hammer. Just, you know, break the shit out of this piece. And then we've got a bunch of little rubble to add to make it look much more natural. The tower looks like a male organ right now. You know, I'm really glad you brought that up because I was at, do any of you guys know a YouTuber, Bare Necessities? He is a, um, more freshwater, but he started doing, what's up, fish fam, Rod93? Um, anyways, so he is, uh, I've known him for like a decade. The guy's a good friend of mine, um, and he's very gay, okay? And I was telling him, you know, the one thing you got with towers is make sure they're as phallic as possible. That's your goal. So if it doesn't look like a giant penis, you've done something wrong. That's my opinion. Hmm. You know, <laughs> one of my questions, um, I know, this, this, I'm, I'm a close to, uh, you know how people have this like ridiculous, um, what are they, what is it? They get really, uh, they get really saucy about their aquascapes. Like, oh, excuse me, this is a Dutch style aquascape, which conforms to traditional methodologies. Oh, excuse me, this is an Iwagumi aquascape. I have to place my father stone here and my uh, insert Japanese weeaboo sounding words other places. Like, <laughs> I mean, if I offended any of you, I apologize. I too have an Iwagumi aquascape, so I don't really care. But the point is, is that you know, I don't know where, <laughs> I don't know what my point is anymore. This is your fault. This is all your fault. Mochi, stop it. I don't care about methodology. I care more about functionality. So my hope with this aquascape is that I can accomplish both of those tasks. Um, aesthetics, which to me matter quite a bit and functionality. And I think the functionality of this aquascape works very well. So let me, let me move these pieces out of the way. So what we've got is we have a lot of open space available to anemones, which is the predominant uh, coral that will be going inside this tank. And then we also have a tower, which is more aesthetics. 
Um, but it also gives a lot of room for an enemies to make choice on if they want higher light. And that's especially important if you want to get a Magnifica, which is a uh, highlight uh, core of uh, a highlight anemone. Um, if you think about Acropora, that's how I view Magnifica anemones. They're, they want the highest light, they want the highest spot. So the best way to make sure that there's no compatibility issues between uh, bubble tip anemones and Magnifica is by producing a high light location. And to me, this is probably gonna be the highest light location in the entire tank, obviously, because it's so tall. Um, my question though, is should the back of this mountain range be taller? And I'm not sure. I mean, hmm. let me put down my drink for a second. Let me kind of turn this a little bit so you guys can see what I'm looking at. Um, so you've got a uh, like a kind of like a, a gentle slope along this side, goes to the top, another gentle slope that comes up here and then comes to the top. But I don't know if this area here is tall enough. I mean, I feel like I could add more to it but I'm not entirely sure what, honestly. I want to make sure the pieces fit together well. Um, yeah, I would raise the sides also. When you say raise the sides, are you talking about like right here, Mr. Mike? Um, yeah. uh, let me see if I can do something with this fine big piece. <laughs> that looks dumb as hell. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Um, hmm. Every rock that you see out here right now is all the rock that I have. I think I went uh, one pound per gallon. So this should be about 100 pounds of, I think I, did, I got a little extra. So it's like 100 to 120 pounds of rock. Um, uh, hmm. Maybe. Maybe I actually just add some height right here. Ooh. That could actually be really nice. That could actually be really good. Now, maybe put the huge piece on the ground in the center of the back wall. I like the small rocks. They look like an eight hole. Yeah, I think so. That's true. I mean, you got to keep in mind, I've got, I can't reach. I've got all of these pieces right here, which are all like flat pieces. And I don't know what I'm going to be doing with these. I actually may put them in my 250 gallon tank as a, as kind of additional space for Acropora. <laughs> That's probably what I'm going to actually end up doing with these. Cause like, let me back it up a little bit. So kind of back to the tower. I'm not sure yet how I want to incorporate these kind of pieces. Um, like if I want to kind of create a arm here and maybe an arm there, or maybe up higher, or maybe a little bit lower. I'm not entirely sure yet, but I think that could be kind of nifty uh, for other core on the tank, not just an enemies. Um, I mean, this is going to be an enemy specific tank, but that doesn't mean I can't add maybe some level of Montipora, um, some Zoanthids, maybe some LPS. I don't really know yet. But so there's the tank right there. One of the things that I've seen a lot of people do is do these kind of back walls to GSP, right? The, the, maybe the overflow is all made up of GSP or the back wall is made up of GSP. What I'd like to try is maybe maybe do um, a, a back wall of Mont encrusting Montipora. That would be really freaking cool because you've got like, you know, uh, an encrusted color, one color, then another color, maybe some oranges, reds, purples. I don't really know. Um, the, the, the only issue that I could see come from that is that uh, – I would eventually need to start dosing calcium and alkalinity, which I wasn't necessarily planning on doing for this tank. Because, um, I mean, for the 250, I've got a dosing system, the GHL doser, which is amazing, by the way. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure, but... Uh, it, um, it seems... I mean, there's some unnatural, there's some un unnatural bits to it. Overall, I think it looks really good. Um, it kind of fits the design that I'm looking for. So yeah, I mean, I like it. It's good. I may add maybe like a little island here, like a little piece of uh, rock. I I'll have to probably find like get some more rock and put it here. Um, maybe put some 
I don't know, GSP on it, uh, maybe something else. I don't really know right now. I don't know yet. But uh, yeah, I think I like this. Anyways, it is 820 and I have actually not even eaten dinner yet. All I've done this evening is drink alcohol. Um, so yeah, I appreciate you guys being here. You know, it was fun. I had a lot of fun. I mean, I guess I say I didn't have dinner, but I uh, lick bread is basically what uh, alcohol is for the most part. Jessica, oh, Jessica, weren't you in the uh, last stream on the Coral Beauty? I think, right? Sorry, having a hard time with my memory right now. <sighs> I think so. I'm not always able to catch them up. Yeah, that's fine. No worries. No big deal. Um, but the angels are do the, the the swallowtails are doing great. Um, the coral beauty. Um, I mean, I didn't really talk about it after the stream, but I mean, you know, it passed away. I'm pretty sad about that, but I mean, I think we all saw that coming. So, oh man, yes. I mean, I've already drank for the like so since four o'clock to what time is it? Eight o'clock. From four o'clock to seven o'clock, I drank nonstop. I had. A few double, uh, see, this is the problem. Um, I had a few double crowns and sprites, which is something I've never had before, which is pretty good. <laughs> um, uh, I had a couple uh, old fashions, which is just bourbon, orange, and ice. Uh, hey, what's up, Josh? How's it going, man? Hmm. You guys need to go check out Josh, the Millennial Reapers channel because he's doing exactly what I'm doing right now with the clown harem tank. The only difference is that he actually has his clown fish. I, I'm still working on the aquascape. I'm, I'm way behind on this guy. <laughs> um, so check him out, check him out on YouTube. He's a good guy. Um, but uh, yeah, anyways, so I had that. I had a couple Moscow mules um, and you guys peer pressured me into drinking continuously are you drank? <laughs> yes, I am drank. I think drinking and aquascaping is the epitome of what the aquarium hobby is all about. And if you don't do this, then you're really missing out because you can create amazing, lush aquascapes that really bring out the you know umami in the aquarium hobby. And yes, I'm coining that. If anyone else tries to use that, tell them that they stole from me and will start some fucking YouTube drama. <laughs> YouTube is so ridiculous, guys. You know, it's actually, actually, Josh. So you know Andy in real life, right? Um, I've known the guy for like a decade. He's a great guy. And uh, he and I were joking around yesterday. We were like, you know what we should do? You know how you get subscribers and viewers in... Um, <laughs> In, uh, in YouTube, you start some YouTube drama, okay? You, I'm sure you people have been around YouTube long enough. You know exactly what I'm talking about. It's it's the petty bullshit. It's, oh, look what social justice item this person brought up. Let's let's talk about that. Or, like, look what this person stole or copy wrote or whatever, and let's talk about that. And, uh, yeah, so I was, like, telling him, you know, we should do something, but let's purposefully make it as Petty as possible. Petty as possible. Talk about like how we disagree about how to measure salinity. And that is what the drama is going to be about. Like something completely stupid. <laughs> hmm. That is that that that's how you get the subscribers, guys. You start the drama. That, that, that <laughs> you know, a couple of people in Discord were telling me to actually do some of that kind of stuff. And I just told them, like, dude, like. The fact that I can afford some of these tanks, I don't, I don't need to do YouTube for the money. Don't really give a fuck about that. I do this for fun. I like showing what tanks I have, you know, like what setup I have. And honestly, I use it as a litmus test for keeping everything in check. Because if I don't have YouTube, then people won't call out, oh, look, 
you've got that one speck of diatoms on your tank. You clearly are the worst reefer of all time. Like it's that kind of stuff that tells me that I know that, you know, it's, it keeps me in line. And I think that that's the best part that I constantly I'm like updating my tank, making sure everything is done right. If anyone ever makes another phallic tower, I'll know who copied. <laughs> yes, yes, you need to do that. That's going to be the drama. Anyone who ever creates an aquascape tower going forward is, is using the Aaron style, the Aaron methodology. They clearly have ripped the penis of my, <laughs> my future tank. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Towers need to be capped with mushroom coral. I like that. That's a good idea. Um, <laughs> you know what we should do? So we, we take the mushroom coral, right? We, we put the mushroom on the top. And then we take, uh, what is, like, uh, what's the, like, maybe some euphelia or, like, GSP, like the pubic hair. <laughs> you guys are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, <laughs> I can't go any further. We can't do this anymore. <laughs> Maybe like like have a line that goes like straight across the top. It's like one artistly curated like Monty Pora encrusting line that goes over the top. Josh, for you, we've gra <laughs> oh. Please don't fall. I need to cement this really badly. We can't. We can't do this anymore. Sorry. Clearly, I'm over the line, and I respect. It's 2018, guys. You know, I respect consent. I, Mochi, hey, hi. Hold on. Mochi, come here. Hi. I got a cat. No, don't scratch me, please. Please don't scratch me. Okay. Mochi's gonna chill here. Hi. This is my cat, if you haven't noticed. He enjoys watching everything. He gets his hair literally in everything, but uh, you know, he doesn't care. See, he's totally toasted, just like I am. <laughs> okay, buddy, be free, be free. Okay. Every cat I've met from this breed are named Mochi. I don't know why. When you say this breed, I'm curious as to what breed you think this particular cat is. And I'm not going to tell you because I'm testing you. What breed do you think this cat is? Curious. Let me know. Tell me. You have like 10 seconds. Malik Trebek. This is like $600 cat question. Ooh, I also, I just noticed that I have nine people watching this stream and 11 likes. And that means that it's 9-11. Never forget, guys. For you Americans, never forget. It's not a dog breed. Move on. <laughs> you know, I should do this more often, streaming. Have a lot of fun. I think my, I think my cat is upset. He's like, feed me. <laughs> yes, is an exotic short hair. Um, we picked it up from a, uh, a lady who lives in San Antonio um, about a year and a half ago, I think, maybe. Yeah, probably about it. Actually, a little less than a year and a half. Um, we drove, I live in Houston, drove all the way to San Antonio. It's like a three hour, two and a half to three hour drive and picked up the cat, drove all the way back, meowing the entire time. But uh, it was fun. It was, uh, it was, uh, it was a good experience. But uh, anyways, I'm totally done. It's uh, 8.30 and I haven't eaten. That's probably why I've drank so much. So uh, everyone, thank you very much for joining me in this aquascape. Um, I think we spent more time drinking than actually aquascaping. But uh, again, patent pending, the uh, phallic tower. I'm going to call it that, the PT, phallic tower. Um, I will probably have a video of this setup in the next week or so. Uh, so look forward to that. But uh, anyways, guys, thank you very much for coming. I will see you next time.